Okay, so I kind of wanted to try to tackle a another review tonight, and I wasn't entirely sure that I was ever really going to review this game. Um, I'm of course talking about the very controversial Dungeons and Dragons Fourth Edition. Um, it's you know, I mean, it's such a hot topic even now. I mean, even two years or so after its release. Um, it's still very hotly debated. Um, it's still really kind of divided the RPG community, more specifically the D&D &D community, quite a bit. Um, and so I wasn't sure that it was, I mean, there was really anything that I could say that hasn't already been said a million times over in a million different rants. Um, but I figured, what the hell, I wanted to get my thoughts out about it because I come from an interesting kind of perspective. I think I'm a, I come from a bit of a different perspective on D&D in general than, than a lot of the, the pro and anti 4th edition camps. Um, so, yeah, let's just dive into it. Um, first off, let me just go ahead and uh, just kind of throw the blanket statement out there um, so that those of you, um, uh, so that certain people don't kind of invest, get invested in this video and then feel kind of betrayed by it, so let me set the expectation absolutely 100% up front. Um, I don't like it. If you have particular grievances with that statement, if you don't agree with me and you are not going to take me seriously from this point out, um, you can go ahead and close the video, and um, you know I will. You know I don't have any problem. I won't. Uh, you know come ranting after you. I'm not going to come chasing you down in the streets to tell you why I don't like Dungeons and Dragons Fourth Edition. Uh, that in mind, if you're still willing to stick with me, and if you want to kind of hear me out on these topics a little more, by all means, join me. So, let's kind of dive into, um, I'm, I, I think I sh a good starting point would be to talk about um, a, another video reviewer who was actually one of the first um, sub people I subscribed to when I, when I started doing these um, RPG review videos, and that's a fat nerd 42. He did a very interesting, very thoughtful, um, and um, you know rather impressive review of Dungeons and Dragons Fourth Edition, in which he tackled a number of the most common myths that kind of get brought up anytime somebody talks about this game. Um, so I think that's uh, kind of uh, taking it from that approach would would help me structure my attempt to review this RPG. So let's kind of kick it off. Um, I'm going to kind of read off his the myths as he presents them and then kind of discuss how I think 4th uh, edition does or doesn't fit um, you know, with that, with that stereotype, with that mindset. The first myth he kind of talks about is no support for role-playing. There's a lot of arguments out there saying that Dungeons & Dragons 4th edition doesn't support role-play, that it's all combat, that they're... That that, um, you know, basically you will have to uh, fight tooth and nail in order to squeeze any role-playing into your 4th edition D&D games. That's not entirely true. As the argument often goes, um, those in support of, those, uh, of the kind of game system that 4th edition is, um, as is, was quoted by a good friend of mine, Supporters tend to argue with me that role-playing is separate from the system and can be strongly supported in any game. I always encourage them to write a history for their Iron Token and Monopoly and discuss their motivations for passing Go. To me, that perfectly captures the, the thought process, at least when I'm thinking about what is support for role-playing in a role-playing game. And I think by my assessment and by that kind of summation that it is correct. Dungeons & Dragons 4th Edition, I, I hesitate to use the word support, but Dungeons & Dragons 4th Edition does not implicitly encourage, okay, okay, encourage is the wrong word, I'm going to get lots of flames for that one. Um, it does not implicitly reward role-playing. Um, that's up to the dungeon master to do. Fine. I get it. But another quote that really strikes home on this topic is that, and I believe this came from um, 
gmtips.com, I think that's the name of it. It was a, it was a website I followed quite a lot um, in the years past, and I've kind of fallen away from it, but I want to get back into. But it's, it's about DM, uh, GM tips, just basically how to be a better GM. And one of the things was talking about character sheets as a tool for the GM to know what the players are interested in. The char the, the, a player's character sheet tells you, as the GM, what the player wants to see from the game. So by choosing certain skills, by choosing certain abilities, by choosing certain character types, the player is really sending you, uh, sending the GM, kind of subtle hints of what they want to get out of the game, what they want to do in the game, what they want to see their characters accomplish in the game, what they want to explore, the ideas or you know scenes or adventures that they want to tackle. And this has always struck very true for me, that I, um, I'm one of those GMs who likes to collect character sheets at the, end of every, at the end of every session because I want to keep the character sheets with me because I read over them in between adventures and I use them as material to build further, to build further uh, sessions. Because I want the game to feel organic to not just the characters themselves, but to feel like I'm at least catering to a, some extent to the, to the desires of the players. Where am I going with this? Dungeons & Dragons 4th Edition, then, 99% of the character sheet has no application outside of a direct conflict scene. Um, now, this is somewhat true of all editions of Dungeons & Dragons, and maybe that's one of the reasons why Dungeons & Dragons have, and I have always had a very difficult relationship, and why I've always, I, I get into D&D for a while, and then I seem to burn out on it pretty, rather quickly, and then I try to get back into it again, and then, um, you know, it's, it's a really back and forth kind of relationship that I've had with Dungeons & Dragons over the years, and maybe that's one of the reasons for it because so much of the character sheet, and this is epitomized, absolutely epitomized in 4th edition, so much of the character sheet has no use outside of either a combat scenario or a dramatic, um, um, like an immediate situational dramatic con uh, a scene. So, you know, uh, you know, like intimidating your way past the guards or, um, you know, that sort of thing, or like a, I can't think of any particular other scenes at the moment, but um, basically, unless there is direct conflict, the system doesn't give players anything even to really communicate to the GM what they want to do. Um, point being, you know, one of the, one of the um, biggest examples of this is the skill list. The skills in 4th edition have really been boiled down. I mean, there's, I think it's like 13, 14, 15 skills now. Um, and I'm all for simplicity. I'm all for streamlining the rules. I'm all about accessibility in terms of game rules. I don't have a problem with a 15 skill, or a 15 item long skill list. Um, but the problem is the skills that are presented um, there are two major obstacles that they that they create in terms of trying to be a DM and even to an extent a player in fourth edition. Um, one of those is that the, a lot of skills get kind of combined together. Um, thievery is the perfect ex perfect example in that thievery and stealth become like a, a rogue really only needs two skills in fourth edition. They need thievery and they need stealth. And maybe or athletics, whenever it is, basically the the climby jumpy skill. Um, and okay, that makes things a lot simpler. But from a player's perspective, that also makes things less kind of not only less flexible, but it also gives you less to kind of communicate what your character is supposed to represent. You know, so you take a high thievery skill, and so you're good at not only sleight of hand and picking locks and picking pockets, um, but what if that wasn't, like, the intent of your character? What if your character, like, it, you know, he was a street performer, so he's maybe good at picking pockets and he's good at general sleight of hand and stuff, but he has no idea how to handle a lock. Well, there's really no way to represent that in 4th edition, because it's all 
it's all um, kind of under the umbrella of one skill. Um, give me just a second, I'll return with the second part here.